when I think about patients with CLL, one of the unique things I think um, that we need to focus on as providers is that this is a cancer of your immune cells and there are immune consequences. One of the things we see in patients both on treatment or off treatment is a higher risk of infection. Um, and when we're in the clinic, we really need to uh, focus on ways we can prevent infection in these patients and make sure that we're providing that supportive um, care on the whole. So one of the things we do see is recurrent infections, a lot of times recurrent sinopulmonary infections. And so one of the things that we can do is check patients' IgG levels. Patients with CLL often do have hypogamma globulinemia are low IgG levels, um, and we can actually give intravenous um, infusions of IVIG, actually subcutaneous IVIG in some cases, um, to prevent future infections and follow along those patients' levels. Another thing that I think is really important is focusing on vaccines as a modality of prevention. Now, we know that patients with CLL might not have as robust a response as someone without CLL with an intact immune system, but any vaccine that is not live and is otherwise recommended for patients at that age group or immunocompromised patients, I do counsel patients on when they come into the clinic. So this can include the flu vaccine every year, COVID-19 vaccines, um, the recombinant zoster vaccination, um, as well as pneumonia vaccination. And each visit, we kind of chat about where they are you know, in their um, vaccine completion timeline um, to have patients uh, be, be on track as a method of prevention. What are some of the ways uh, in your clinic, I know there's some other issues um, that you also focus kind of beyond um, just the disease itself, but also the Im implications of the disease? Absolutely. So I talk to my patients about the fact that their immune systems are supposed to be watching for infections and cancers. And the CLL cells are actually distracting to their immune system. It kind of gives patients this way to visualize what's happening in their body. So I uh, totally agree. I talk to them about immunizations and making sure that we're staying up to date on all non-live vaccines. Um, so anything that should be indicated um, for a general population and then more specifically for our patients with CLL. The other thing I think about is cancer screening. So we know that patients have um, an increased risk of non-melanoma skin cancers. And I talk to my patients about seeing dermatology once a year for a full body skin check to ensure that we're not missing any basal cell or squamous cell carcinomas that could be removed before they become um, you know, bigger or more invasive. I also talk to patients about staying really vigilant about their age appropriate cancer screening. So I say, I don't need you to do anything extra, but I want to make sure that we're staying up to date on the stuff that we should be doing anyway. So mammograms when they're due, pap smears when they're due, colonoscopies when they're due, for patients with smoking history, thinking about that lung cancer screening, um, PSA checks, things like these are really important because our patients do have that increased risk of cancer. And if we can catch things early and prevent them from becoming um, you know, bigger issues, that's certainly a, a great thing for our patients. Um, and totally agree with you in terms of the hypogamma globulinemia. If patients have these recurrent infections, we want to ensure that we're providing the best care that we can. If they have recurrent infections with hypogamma globulinemia, IVIG can be very helpful for patients. Um, and that can be an infusion, um, you know, multiple times a year. So we use kind of nadir levels of IgG to guide how often we should be giving um, IVIG, and, and that can be a really helpful piece to, to avoid infection for patients. When patients are going on to therapy, we also think about, you know, what kind of prophylaxis do we need? Often with chemotherapy or with patients who are neutropenic, you know, we have this, these kind of knee-jerk reactions to what kind of prophylaxis we need. Um, for patients with CLL who are receiving novel agents, often routine prophylaxis isn't actually needed. So patients who are going on to these continuous or time-limited therapies that are novel agent-based really don't need um, to be on routine prophylaxis unless they have a history of some infection that makes me think that they need to be on that prophylaxis. So patients who have a history of recurrent shing um, shingles or recurrent HSV outbreaks those are patients where I consider keeping them on antiviral prophylaxis. Patients who have a history of PCP, I consider keeping them on PCP prophylaxis or PJP prophylaxis, um, kind of 
you know, while they're on therapies. But as a rule of thumb, we don't need to be putting these patients on prophylaxis. Yeah, I think that's a really important point that um, we have these general kind of categories, the infection prevention, um, as well as the secondary primary malignancy, infection and screening, or prevention and screening, um, but also that really this is such a heterogeneous group and disease with patients with CLL um, that there are those individualized, you know, circumstances, um, looking at their infection history and really personalizing um, the both the prophylaxis in terms of medication when they're on therapy, um, as well as that IVIG prophylaxis. Great point.